Today's question comes from Vargas, and Vargas asks a question that I think many people have considered, but maybe didn't quite know how to put into words. I'll put it into words with a lot of words for an answer. Would you agree that a 4070 is a better deal than a 4090, since in two years' time, a 4090 will lose $700 of its value, whereas a 4070 will only lose $300? That's an interesting premise. Today's video was brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. First, I may or may not agree with you on the dollar amounts that you describe. 700 versus 300 in two years time, the 4090 might lose more or less, or you could be exact. The 4070 could lose more or less or be the 300 that you describe. However, even if I disagreed with your numbers, your premise is spot on. The 4090 will lose more dollar value in two years than the 4070. Whether we agree or disagree on the specific numbers, 50 bucks this way, 100 bucks that way, your basic premise is correct. And this is also true of AMD cards. The higher end parts tend to lose more value over the same period of time. Case closed, simple. Buy the 4070, 4090 is dumb, right? Not so fast. If you buy an RTX 4070 today to play at 1440p, how is that card going to work in two years? Reasonably well for new games two years from now, but maybe not amazing. You may very well be ready to replace it. If your goal is to play AAA games, the next Assassin's Creed, the next Division or Ghost Recon game, the next Spider-Man or Hogwarts or Cyberpunk sequel or whatever else may come out in the next two years, keep in mind, these cards launched in 2022, it's 2023, and two years time will be 2025 when the 50 series has already launched. So new cards will be out, new games will be out, things will become more demanding. It's just how it works. Will an RTX 4070 in 2025 still be able to play newly launched AAA games at 1440p, high to ultra detail, at greater than 60 frames per second without any issues? No VRAM issues, no performance issues. I would argue it will not. It'll do it for the next two years, mostly Hogwarts Legacy, but it will not do it beyond that, which means that if that is your target, then you're just going to be replacing it with a 5070. The process of selling that card, to paying the fees or finding somebody to buy it, and then having to buy the new card and swap it out takes time, it takes energy, and you lose something on the transaction every time you do it. An RTX 4090 is a little bit overkill for 1440p today. I mean, that if anything screams 4K card, that card screams 4K card. But at 1440p, you essentially have a super premium card that can run everything at ultra detail at high frame rates without any cares in the world. It'll do that for the next two years and probably a bit beyond that. Because it has 24 gigs of VRAM, you won't have a VRAM issue. And while the performance will slow down over time, you can always go from ultra to very high to high. And if need be, in four years time, you can turn the shadows to medium and, and anti-aliasing to medium and a few other things. Although with DLSS 3 frame gen, you might not have to. It's a more expensive card, but if you can skip the 50 series and keep it for four years and have the same performance four years from now, that a 5070 will have four years from now, but you didn't have to change your card. And as a bonus, you got unbelievably stupid, super premium performance for the next two years from today. That's not necessarily a bad deal. Now, to be absolutely fair, buying a 4070 today and replacing it with a 5070 in two years, and then keeping that two years and replacing it with a 6070 and 770 and 8070 and so on will probably cost a little bit less money in the long run than buying the 90 card every other gen. 4090, skip the 5090, 6090, skip the 7090, 8090, and so on and so forth. That'll probably cost a little more money. How much? A hundred, maybe $200 more every other year. Maybe you're spending between 50 to to $100 extra a year. We're talking about a cup of coffee a month. In return for the cost of a cup of coffee a month, instead of messing with mid-range card after mid-range card, 
you get to at least 50% of the time enjoy the best mankind has to offer. If you have the money, a 4090 is not dumb, but only if you have the money. A 4070 is fine. For that matter, I would like to remind everybody watching this who thinks, oh my gosh, Tech Deals is just recommending 4090s again. If you don't buy a 4090, you suck. That's not true. One of the best deals on the market today is the RX 6600 8GB card for 1080p gaming for $180. That is an unbelievable value for budget value gaming. It'll play everything on the market at some reasonable level of detail at 1080p. For 1440p gaming, the $320 RX 6700 XT with 12 gigs of VRAM is a phenomenal deal, and anybody who uses the word budget and value in the same sentence should go buy one of those cards. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used eWin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with eWin to bring you this special discount and recommend eWin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. But when you get to the top of the line, when you start spending a lot of money, sometimes buying the best gets you more than raw dollar cost per frame per second. What it gets you is the joy of not having to care. And not having to care can be a beautiful thing. So your analysis isn't necessarily bad, but I don't think it's as bad as those numbers sound when you take it into that context.